All right. I am Naomi Joy Smith from The Garden, Grassroot Development Network, and speaking with Ted J. Rao, who is in a leadership role of the Sociocracy for All organization. Now, uh, we came in contact because I'm actually in this Facebook group for Sociocracy for All and have reviewed some of the material on there and find it very fascinating. And in light of the Collaboration Incubator series, which is hosted from the, the open value network known as Vanilla Way, we have come together to explore the overlapping themes in our work. Thank you for joining me, Ted. So I have uh, an interesting angle for this, which based on the fact we have not met each other and many people who may watch this video may not have met us either. So I wonder if we can meet each other like we would in out in day to day world, you know, say we were both at a meet up event or something and I'm saying, so Ted, what are you into? <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's funny because I refer so often to exactly that situation in my teaching, actually. I use that as an example. Um, when somebody asks you, so what do you do? You typically answer with what you actually do, right? What's your concrete mm. doing? Um, and yet, what is also interesting is what is your mission? But that's sort of, you know, mm. oh, I change the world. I change how people relate to each other, which is not very specific. That's sort of, but that is my, that is my mission. Mm. What I actually do in my in my daily life is I teach, I coach, I consult, um, and I'm in this yeah in this leadership um, position in the organization that I co-founded, uh, teaching sociocracy, which is not something we invented. It's been around quite a few years, mm. um, but I came in contact with it in an organization that I was part of, and it it when my light bulb went off. So it's like mm. yes, what is this? This is cool, and this is super needed. Mm. that's what i do a lot a lot a lot of computer work which i don't mind i actually like the computer work of it i'm nice. to be on the nerdy side wow you're one of those really rare individuals oh you're needed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> so uh, i i am a little bit familiar with sociocracy and i would love to know a little more um, do you grow sick of pitching sociocracy to people? No, I, I actually always say it's more like a poem. It sounds a little different every time. Um, mm. So I don't, you know, I don't use the same, like obviously the same phrases because it's hard to find new ones all the time, but I don't recycle all that much. Mm. Uh, so if you ask me tomorrow, it will sound a little differently, which is what I like about it. Yeah. So basically it is a way of governing, uh, self-governance. So self-governance, you know, the people who actually associate together, uh, decide together, that is the word sociocracy. So the socios, those who associate together, decide together. So that's different from just the masses decide by voting in, in democracy. Um, and it has three elements, the three elements that, that in our interpretation, that, you know, like a poem, there's different, different directions of where you can take things. In our uh, interpretation, it is um, one of the one of the uh, foundations is the decision making method. How do we make decisions as a group together? Mm -hmm. And it is by consent, which is as a version of consensus um, that brings a little bit more clarity and a little bit um, makes it a little easier um, to to find a way of moving forward. The second aspect of that of sociocracy is organizational structure. We um, use uh, teams that we call circles that make decisions together so if we have a whole organization we split things up and we put you know four to seven people onto each topic and so that we really decentralize decision making and operations mm -hmm. and the way all the groups do come together again is because when you have a parent circle and a child circle then two people from two people will be in both circles so that there will be two people who can report either way. Mm. Um, the third aspect is feedback. We, can, we want to have a learning organization. We want to learn from what we do. So the, the, the principle of feedback is woven into everything we do. And one important thing for us about it in, in Sociocracy for All, and SOFA we call it, is that we 
like both the very abstract we like talking about what's you know what's the what's the mindset what's the mission what's the purpose what's the big picture here okay how do we relate to each other yeah. but also okay you have to know your skills you have mm. to actually know how to do it just talking about it yeah. is, is sweet but not where we're going we are actually you know both feet on the ground only if you if you if you're actually able to use it it's worth anything because what we actually want to do is change how we relate to each other and that is one relationship or one organization at a time sort of my slogan that i've been carrying around for a few weeks now is details matter people sometimes talk about how you know find beautiful words about how important it is to listen listen to each other but if you keep interrupting the other person it does have an impact, right? So that's not interrupting somebody or just occasionally, you know, being mindful of that. That is one of the details that really matter. And what sociocracy offers is a structure that holds you enough that you can pay attention to those details mm. and kind of unleash what, what really happens when humans come together without, without being distracted by, there we go again. Now so-and-so is talking for another five minutes and I got interrupted and why is nobody asking me and why do we not know about this and so on and so on. Other things are getting away. Mm. So by its nature, it facilitates psychological safety in the team. Yeah, that is, that's, yeah, that's something I, um, I've been thinking about a lot because mm. the, the beauty of meetings is flow, right? Flow yeah. is the absence of distraction. So somebody recently told me, oh, really sociocracy um, gives us group magic. And I said, no, actually, that's not how I would word it. How I would word it is humans create group magic. Yeah. Humans, that's, you know, the, the, the ability to connect and sort of tune into each other, that is human. What sociocracy does, it, it keeps all the crap out of the way, <laughs> you know, all the distraction from from all the other things that happen when we come together and we're not mindful and it's hard to pay attention to everything. And that's why I'm a big fan of systems, mm. you know, like, like consent decision-making, I know how it works. And if I know how it works, then I know that I will make a decision that considers everybody. I don't have to actively think about everybody's needs all the time. I know I have a system that works and I apply it and I'll be good. Great. Um, adding the feedback mechanism, but really safe, you know? So, so there, there's less reinventing the wheel and I see a lot of reinventing the wheel in the self-management world. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, like, let me add one thing that mm -hmm. is the reason I'm doing sociocracy and not all the other good systems that are out there. It's not because I don't think the other systems are good. It's just because I know sociocracy works and it's one of the systems that works and it's the one I know best. And that's what I'm doing. There is no statement in it that is, comparative it says yeah. this is certainly good enough use that one yes you know i'm not saying other systems aren't as good it's just the one that i know works no cool. statement about others no yeah. doubt because it is quite difficult when you start to discover one thing and then it's someone will compare that with an, and you're like am i liberating structures am i holacracy am i teal and um so long as you know that something is out there and ready for you to use it's a tool in the shed you find your favorite one the one that fits yeah right and you build in a structure to ask yourself whether it has served you did it give you what you wanted right and um, sometimes it becomes about what is the better the systems which is completely the wrong question in my view it, it distracts us yeah. and what i see is some paralysis of people who look into the self-management world there's mm -hmm. just so much out there mm -hmm. that then it is the counterpart of it is a group having so many ideas that they don't move forward and that is what we're trying to avoid right so mm -hmm. there you need you need both right you need well three things really is you need the detail the groundwork the skills which which i would like to see more of you need to know why you're doing things and then in the middle there is this certain pragmatism of moving forward mm -hmm. something you know mm -hmm. that's good and that is a principle that I like a lot in sociocracy, just as holacracy is the good enough. This is good enough, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I share this mantra with a lot of people. Good enough for now, safe enough to try. And let's see what the feedback brings in. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, that's, I'm glad you're saying that because that's something people sometimes overlook, you know. It's mm -hmm. not only good enough. It is also with making a decision because a decision will get us into a place that we will experience something no and can evaluate it later instead of sitting together theory, like thinking 
in theoretical terms about what would be the perfect way if we ever did something. Yeah. <laughs> that is not going to give us any new information. So that is the perfect mm -hmm. example of stuck. Yes. Stuck while being right. <laughs> like you say, jumping off the cliff. <laughs> But it's almost a different metaphor. It's about bringing it to life instead of staying in this uh, very dead, very analysis paralysis. And that's hinging more on the logical, that you've become too logical, you are not able then to experience the magical. I like that. Yes, you're right. I, I agree. And I like it. I hadn't thought about it that way. Cool. Well, I like how these peer-to-peer -peer interactions bring a lot of juicy aha moments. Hmm. Pragmatism. Yeah, you're right. There is. It's interesting because I always saw myself. Uh, I was actually in academia for ten years. Wow. Academia is what brought me to the United States, actually. Mm. And I always thought of myself as, you know, academia intellectual. I like theory. I like concepts and so on. And yet, I when I was maybe in my, yeah, you know, I guess you know, around turning thirty, it was like, okay, now I want to do something that actually contributes to society because mm. all this theory is great, yet it doesn't feed anybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't change anything. It's fun. It's fun, yet it doesn't change anything. And I think that is sort of the history mm. of where I'm now. Of yes, concepts, give me all of them, but mm. can we please also do something because otherwise I get I get antsy. Totally. Do you think there's uh, too much time or not enough time within the field of sociocracy on developing the structure itself as it relates to anyone in the world that uses it? Are you asking do groups spend too much time on sort of on, on governance instead of the doing of what the organization is about? Rather than individual groups, I'm thinking about the movement and how you've now seen the launch of Sociocracy 3.0. So that is saying to me that the movement is reinventing itself in accordance with what we learn as a collective. Do you think that enough energy is being spent on this or perhaps there is too much and not enough just using it and adapting it on our personal level to what works for us personally. Yes. Mm. Yes. I, yes. I, I want to see implementations instead of reiterations of, of something that is basically, you know, very often what ends up happening is different words for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And yes, I get very bored by that because, because to me, I, yeah, I'm just endlessly pragmatic pragmatic I, like yeah. does it change anything does it really change anything to reword anything so really that is not applying the good enough for now principle on yourself right? right and that's the irony of it the irony of it is that we spend time making the theory perfect and even better and even better and even better instead of moving ahead with it yeah. while while continuing to learn I, nothing against the continuing to learn yeah. but but where's the pragmatism in all of that? And that is, yeah, that's, so to me, it's not wrong. It's just not something that is appealing to me. You know, which is funny because I spent the last year writing a book, right? So I, but it was really, so for me, it was, yes, about improving, but more in terms of how you improve inevitably anything that you rewrite, you know, mm -hmm. because you sort of iron things out, you smoothen it out a little, you know. Yeah. But I was very conscious of not introducing jargon where it's unnecessary, of not changing anything if it's unnecessary, of offering varieties without it becoming arbitrary, you know. So I was very aware every day I was writing of this balance thing of, I don't want to reinvent it. I just want to say it as simple as possible so yeah. it can be used. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, being the vessel of like, no, I'm just, I, this is not mine. It's nobody's, you know, that's another mm. strong thing for me. It's the, the whole ownership of those systems um, yeah. just leaves me a little baffled. So, yeah, it's just coming, coming, and, and I try to sort of play it back into the world as something more usable in that next iteration. That's so cool. Yeah, there's a truism, which I believe it was Manuela again who shared with me this week. Um, <laughs> Perfection is not the state where there is nothing left to add. It's the state where there's nothing left to remove. Mm -hmm. So you talk about simplification, and I, I have in my mind a metaphor of a sculptor who slowly and slowly removes from this mass until you have the most simple thing. And that is the beauty of it. And I really noticed this in the website for Sofa. It is very to the point. It's accessible for 
I imagine myself as you know many different people who would come to the website with their questions and their needs for sociocracy, and it seemed like you'd really considered a lot of angles and a lot of people that could use it. I mean, was it quite a process to get your website designed to make it as accessible as it is? <laughs> Never ask somebody about their website because they always have the next iteration, you know, like it's like, yeah, it's not good enough right now, but we have other things that we're doing. The, um, yeah, I guess simplicity, simplicity is big. And yet, you know, there's another funny effect, effect at the same time, because one reviewer said, and I, I loved that he said that, mm -hmm. he said about our book, it's 300 pages of common sense, you know. Unfortunately, it's common sense that needs 300 pages to explain it because it doesn't, because there's, that's where we're going back to detail, right? Mm. And we're trying at the same time to say it's super simple and, you know, apply however you want to apply it. And the, the essence, my, that's something I got from my co-founder and co-author, um, yeah, partner in crime, mm. Jerry Gotts Gonzalez. He says, the essence of sociocracy is no one ignored. Mm. Whatever is a carrying out of that principle to him is sociocracy. Mm. Okay, so, and yet, as we were talking earlier, the whole reinventing the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. If we just walk around saying, oh, let's just make sure everybody is considered, then we're probably not going to get anywhere. Oh, it will take <laughs> us another 30 years to get to the same point again. Um, we'll just start uh, identifying new subcultures. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, that's what we're doing in the book of, okay, how yes how can we say it as simple as possible and yet as detailed as possible so it can actually be done and mm. that's a tricky one it's a tricky one because at the same time i was working a lot with that paradox the paradox of teaching self-governance mm. because because who am i to tell other people anything yeah and yet if we all walk around saying that we go into that reinventing space so um how, how can you say it without being prescriptive? I don't want to be prescriptive, I, but I'm willing to tell you what I've seen work and what I've seen, mm. what I've seen you know, that, that might be a slippery slope. I've seen enough slippery slopes that I recognize them fairly mm. soon. So that's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of balancing yeah. that is happening. Um, how did we get to this topic though? You were saying the something. What, yeah, the website. Mm. What I've, let me mention something that I think we're not, that we're not good at yet. Mm -hmm. that we're working on and that sort of refers to what I said earlier but me having to spend time on a business plan <laughs> is um, it's being more extreme saying it simply is nice in order to encourage um, implementations yet it, yet it is not everything and that goes to the prescriptive place and it is that what people need is somebody to hold their hand while they're doing it because mm -hmm. it is scary for people it, and I get why it's scary it is doing something that that you know other people would go really I think that's gonna work but mm -hmm. so um it is going yeah it's it's taking a risk jumping off a cliff and it only works if you really commit to it there's mm -hmm. not so much that you can take away and it will still work um and then the question is, how do you hold people's hands and build a structure that will allow you to hold people's hands while not while staying out of their business because they have full um, choice about what they do or don't do, and that's another one of those balancing acts. Um, so what we're trying to do is basically create a structure that that allows for people to to come closer together to work on their own implementation and us supporting that sort of melting pot, the image I have is a melting pot. Um, so yes, simplicity is great and yet it's still not enough. So we're, we're working on the next iteration right now of how we show up. You're not, not of sociocracy, sociocracy stays the same or mm. doesn't whatever, but mm. of how we go about it, how we support um, implementations. Wow. Yeah, this, um, this speaks to me quite personally on a few levels. <coughs> What I've noticed recently, um, I've started to explore the yogic practice of Tantra. And there is a very similar um, concept, which was revealed to me in July, of allowing the other person to do as much as they can for themselves. If you take over, then you deprive somebody of their ability to become stronger. And sometimes all, all that someone needs is to know that there's backup 
if I get into murky waters, someone is there to catch me again. You know, it's, it's about verifying and validating that each other is strong enough to handle it. And that is the message that I think we try to share when we do this work in organizations. Um, believe in yourself. You know this already. I'm only here to remind you. Mm. It's quite yes. a parallel. Yeah. Yes, reminding people. And what I see is not something very, very specific, actually. That's my mind going from something, um, you know, rather um, sort of in the, in the um, concept world to the, very specifically what I see groups struggle with mm. is um, leadership, you know, like, mm. and also sort of leadership and facilitation of how do you move a group forward without cutting anybody off? Because often I re notice that groups come from this, oh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but then what happens is the whole group shoots itself on the foot because they're not making progress. So yeah. that's what I, actually, I was struggling with, with leadership issues myself because I was always a little bit too assertive, um, mm -hmm. at least given the, the gender I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Always a slight little bit too, too assertive and, um, and yet, I, there was also the sense of, well, if, if nobody makes a proposal, then nothing happens. Sort of, what is a good and, and whole way of making a proposal, bringing a proposal to a group? That is a skill that takes a lot of, a lot of um, I don't know what to call it. Um, I guess what you're talking about, the trust yourself mm. and stay open at the same time. Mm you know, for, for what happens when you put out a proposal, not putting out a proposal is not an option. Yeah. Putting out a proposal, you know, like a, like a, um, like dropping a bomb is not an option. So how do you do it? And people don't know how to do it. Yeah. Self-conscious about it. And they'd rather not make a proposal. That's at least the audience that, that we're working with, um, fairly often is, is in that, um, in that field, which is, yeah, it's interesting to me that, that, Given how assertive I am, I've never struggled with, you know, not wanting to make a proposal, but I see that's what, hmm. that's what happens. Yeah, that we can be afraid of um, being ridiculed, being wrong. That there are a lot of things that prevent us from airing what could be a perfectly valid point of beginning. And then, you know, from that beginning, something can be built upon, no? Right, or overpowering, you know? That is, hmm. that is what I think some are, some are concerned about too. So there's both. Uh -huh. And if you think about it, it's true. You know, you can either be overpowering or too cautious. It can mm -hmm. either be courageous and move the group forward or it can be ridiculed. And the, the, there is probably not even such a thing as the middle. <laughs> because it's too no. thin of a line. Um, yeah. that, that's scary. That's scary. But maybe there's middle ground. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, or, you know, I mean, there's a range of tolerance where people go like, well, that was a little, you know, wow, that was quite a leap in your proposal, but okay, I'm willing to go along with it. And then it's good. That's me going back to skills. It's good to have the skills of, of, of knowing, okay, so how do you know that, that, that we're good? You know, like, for example, what we do in sociocracy is doing a round, right? Okay, somebody has a proposal. After everybody understands the proposal, we do a round on what is your reaction? So mm -hmm. that we can be sure that we're all on the same page, or at least we have information about whether we're on the same page yeah so that's just a super ridiculously simple tool and yet mm. if you don't do it you sort of yeah you don't have the feedback loop and you don't actually know about each other where you stand so you're in in, in blind flight really mm -hmm. yeah yeah and there are different levels on which this works i mean if you try to apply this and you see already within some teams we have these interpersonal issues we we don't trust ourselves enough or, um, you know, the work within Dragon Dreaming to launch an idea, being willing for that idea to die so that it can be reborn as something greater. And, and a lot of it, it still includes, well, everything it comes back to the fact that we're human participating in this group. And I wonder if you could speak a little bit to um, how do you practice your beliefs on a day-to-day -day human scale in your daily life? Does this come out? Does it um, have a little interaction with your work? It's for me even hard. I have a hard time separating work and life, I have to say. 
for, for, for many reasons, you know, I live in a community, in an intentional community with mm. about 100 people that practice the sociocracy and many, many people here, for example, have a background in nonviolent communication. Mm. Um, my life partner is a trainer in, in nonviolent communication, which was a wild mm. ride at the beginning because I was thrown, I, I, was, I kept saying I'm, I'm thrown into, um, like I was playing regional league and now I'm playing on the national team. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> because it, like as me as for for how how skilled I felt in in relationship things, I was thrown into a situation where there were no excuses anymore. You know, <laughs> and that was hard. I it, it took me a year or two to come up to speed, yeah. and to me, you know, really to explain that because people might be missing the the sort of how do I go from NBC and sociocracy. To me, that's really the expression of the exact same thing. You know, mm. you and fe feedback. You have to considering everybody's needs. They're out, stepping out of right and wrong and into well, what would work? Mm -hmm. um, so it it really is on an interpersonal level what sociocracy is on an organizational level. But then there's many other things like I practice sociocracy with my kids, though they don't know that. Actually, they do know that, but but they're not as aware of it. For example, we practice rounds every dinner. We do a round on highlights of lowlights, and I have five children, so it's quite a big. Round. So it's seven of us, you know, seven of us. Um, yeah. And the little one um, says what was hard in, in her day and, yeah, up to, to the oldest one. And it's hard for the older kids to listen to the kids. And it's, well, and vice versa. And sometimes it's hard for grown-ups to listen to any of them. But <laughs> the whole concept of a round of everybody has had a day, you know, everybody is coming here in some, some kind of mental state. That is something that, that I experience quite a bit. And I was thinking, actually, another thing that I haven't really explored that I'm that at some point I will have to explore, and I'm going to be transparent about this in this video because I'm in this um, I'm transitioning right now, right? I'm doing mm -hmm. exchange, mm -hmm. and um, and I was wondering to myself that that had to do with everything, and I think it is where I'm with it right now, but that might still change. Is that it's hard to be in a self-managed world without being true to yourself it's sort of some that's that's that, and it's that scary yeah it was certainly scary for me and i know that's what many people are afraid of because what happens if we actually say how we feel and what we think and what we want i mean yeah uh, so that's yeah but in a immersed in a world you know in community and nec and sociocracy it was impossible for me to hold up the, mm. the as tight as that sounds um so yeah all those principles are everywhere all the time it's there's not yeah. really a way to escape i so celebrate that we live in a world that you have this choice now yes it's really oh, so do i, so do I. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but the human dimension can't be removed from this and you talk about how hard it can be to actually go through the groundwork when you don't want to be listening to somebody but there's a, a belief that this is going to work in the end because you've seen sociocracy work that this is not the kind of hard which means maybe we're doing something we shouldn't is the kind of hard which is okay let's lean into this let's get through this because it's worth it Yes. It's quite hard to distinguish <laughs> hard. That's true. But there are different scales of difficulty. Mm. Sometimes people ask me, for example, oh, you understand. What, what if you can't figure it out? What if you don't, can't work through an objection? And mm. sometimes I'm a little baffled by the question. I have sort of a almost sarcasm. I'm not proud of the sarcasm in it, but sometimes I say, like, okay, so. Your question seems to assume that non-cooperation is an option. To me, that's not an option. Right. So, like, yes, yes. Ultimately, we're all gonna like shoot each other in the circle. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> we have to figure it out. That yeah. to me, the only option. If you ask me what if that doesn't work, I don't know what to say because oh. because it has to work out. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's yeah. What you said reminded me of that. Of like, yeah. Well, yes it might be hard yet what are our options yeah <laughs> there is no plan b we have to figure it out well here so okay let's let's see how it works totally <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have in mind to ask you about why it's important that we work toward global distributed democracy. And it's a no brainer. Like, why should we? There, there are a thousand ways to answer that question. Um, <laughs> maybe I should ask what's, what's at stake if we don't work toward something that includes everybody's voice in, in going forward as a global species. I was, you know how sometimes, especially white middle class people like myself, um, we sometimes walk around thinking, oh, where's this world going to go when things break down and all of that? You know, all the, all the um, collapse fantasies that we, that we tell each other. And I was talking to a woman from the South, a black young woman from the South. And I started, we talked about that. And at some point she said, what are you, you're talking about that as, as if it were in the future. This system is already not working for so many. It hasn't, it hasn't reached middle class white Massachusetts. But I mean, look around you. This is not working at all, you know? And it was this, like, it really hit me off like, oh my God, how ridiculous was that question? You know? <laughs> yes, that's clearly ignorance and privilege here of like, yeah, true, it's not working at all. Okay. And I, my theory is that, mm. um, the people who still do business as usual are not, you know, as scared of that moment when it hits you of just how shitty things are yeah. uh, and how much, like, you have, it's, it's hard to open yourself up to the suffering and the pain. Mm -hmm. um, and yet once you do it and it's, it's impossible to unsee. So then it's, so, you know, what is at stake? <laughs> <laughs> To, yeah, there is, there is, the same. There is no, everything and, mm -hmm. and yeah, so that's, that's yeah. what it is. And for me, it's sort of one of those no brainers of, okay, once you've opened your eyes, it's, it's, it's time to get to work. Really. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> how I tell myself the story at least. This came up last night when a few of the collaboration incubator participants met last night and um what were the words um we're we're touching on the fact that it's very hard to uh to open up to the truth of what's going on in the world how many horrors there are and to have to unlearn worldviews that we've been raised in because we recognize that they have not been functioning and they're gonna to need to go. And suddenly all of this internal work goes, we feel grief or shame or uh, guilt. And how can we ask people to do that so that they might come and join us? And after just a, a small amount of discussion, I actually uh, turned to the person I'm working with on documentation and I said, no, she, she said, but it's already, something that the majority of people in the world are dealing with <laughs> you know there's just a few that need to catch up and do their own level of oh this hurts oh this doesn't feel nice and sooner or later everyone is destined for that it might come as a as an economic crisis it might come as a natural disaster sooner or later we will have to face something terrifying and what we're actually doing in this work is offering the chance to deal with it now when you're in a safe and supportive environment rather than down the line when you might not have that chance to take it, you know, so smoothly, so subtly, it's just going to hit you. And, um, yeah, so I see that sociocracy is really a tool worth practicing now because now is when we need it and the future we're only going to need it more. Mm. Yeah, we have somebody. A, a donor told us um, at some point uh, she only um, she only donates like you know in her view global uh, climate climate is is the one big problem so that's where all her money goes. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm happy to accept that. That's not not the issue. But I was thinking, well, you know, chances are these some people are going to survive. How are they going to make decisions? <laughs> so it's like 
as long as people are around, we won't have to make decisions together. That's, yeah. it's, that, that's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> so it will happen in some way and we might mm. either find better ways of doing it or we'll just either reinvent the wheel or we will use our old biases again. Mm. So to me, yeah, this is, this is all complementary work. It's not either mm. all important or whatever. It's all, it's all the same. I mean, it's all, it is all the same. Mm. But I mean, if we're, if we were given the ultimate gift of having another hundred years to figure it out with everyone that's on the planet now and those that are on their way, how would we scale up sociocracy onto a level of global governance? How does that work? Um, many people are not aware, I know you are, but that's sort of where that, where that is going and that there is so really the way I practice sociocracy, it's geared towards organizations. Yet the world is not just made out of organizations. Yeah. And um, there have been people thinking through about what it could look like to use sociocracy for, um, for just people, you know, neighborhoods, yeah. and, uh, towns, you know, states, countries. And it's funny because while some people were still thinking about it, we learned about a project that has already doing it and has been doing it for quite a while. And it was one, again, one of those humbling moments where we realized, oh, wow, you know, there we are still thinking about it. Others have already organized hundreds of thousands of people and they're showing us the way. I, I totally love that. So mm -hmm. where that started was um, in India where somebody, an actually a Catholic priest, started organizing his, um, his parish into neighborhoods and have the kids come together mm -hmm. the way so their their um their methodology with social technology is super super simple and as divide things up into groups of 30 mm. and i'm quoting actually the founder because he he said it in just words that were so beautiful he said in a group of 30 everybody has a name everybody has a face mm. and you get you know each other so that's the basis that's okay and you know what's around you so we have decision making where people know each other trust each other and they know what needs doing perfect okay and then they um and they use for example sociocratic elections to um find out who would be the delegate to the next layout because what they build is they build tiers and in some you know obviously we would know about this if all of india were organized this way so it's you know it's in some areas more in some areas less but they have hundreds and thousands hundreds of thousands of kids organized and grown-ups and it's having all kinds of um interesting effects um of course the former government um, in some areas where that is strong feels threatened by it because they realize how much power there is in people coming together and noticing that really all it takes is a forum of talking to each other and figuring things out. Mm. Um, and now this is also replicating very, very quickly because it's so simple and it because it taps into something that we already know, right? It's just, yeah. we've just unlearned how to organize and we've just forgotten that we're actually in charge if we, if we, if we, if we accept that authority and that, that, that gift. So it's been replicated in Africa and the groups in really on every continent now, now working on it. And especially in Africa, I think they've sort of gotten a head start. They started replicating things. And to me, cool. I just, I, I don't know, something in that just makes me completely, I, I don't, it's just a happy, it's a happy thought of like, wow, maybe that's really all it takes. <laughs> because it seems, yeah, I know it seems very simple and yet, they are having great successes and and it's simple enough that you can just redo it yet i had this moment where actually i was on the phone with with the, the founder edwin john and he he um for sheer coincidence he and my one of my daughters know each other and um so she's at a, you know there we go white middle class um western massachusetts public middle school mm. me <laughs> you know, meets the organizer of this kind of effort. And he's like to her, don't you want to start a children's parliament in your school? And her face was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, that's, it's like two universes that don't even touch, you know? It's like, yeah. that's, like this, is, this is a complete, completely alternative, like, <laughs> universe. <laughs> it's, yeah. it was just, Funny to sit and like, yeah, right. I don't think a middle school is going to do that. And a middle school is great. And yet, you know, it's completely old system. Mm. 
Mm. And it just seemed so incompatible. It took my breath away in that moment of like, wow, you know, just sitting with this is where we are and this is where I want to be. And wow, that's mm -hmm. all big distance between mm -hmm. those two worlds. Yeah. Wow. Well, that feeling that it's impossible. And it, I mean, sometimes it's as though it's not as urgent. Therefore, why should we spend their resources now? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they've, they've, um, they've come a long way. I'm, I'm completely in love with their approach. Um, it would, my guess is it'll take a little bit still to get organized because they struggle, for instance, with, you know, lack of funding, of course, yeah. they struggle with the different languages, just simple mm -hmm. things like training materials, translating them into, into the local languages. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're on it yeah it's amazing and uh, they will be bridging those divides really quickly yeah and do you think in a system like this that one can feel not only that they belong to the project on a local level but they feel also a sense of belonging as it scales into the global i wonder whether that matters <laughs> mm. I like I mean we all like the sense of feeling like you know we're part of something bigger mm. and yet I wonder what the human scale is you know like maybe our humans maybe maybe don't they say we're just made for what 1200 people maybe 10,000 but that's sort of way where we're a little bit out of our depth yeah. So maybe the, the vision I have of a sociocratic world governance is that there might be a, a president of what we would call a nation, right? Mm -hmm. but, but we don't even know who that is because it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So, you know, I mean, if you think about domains, and that's what we call sort of the area of authority in sociocracy, mm -hmm. the ground level, let's say town level, if we gave them all the power they need to mm. make the town work, you know, and really only shift up what needs to be the next level up, you know? Yeah. And then we have bioregions, okay? Yeah. So everything, for example, that has to do with water is on that, in that bioregion. It doesn't have to go much higher except for flow of information and lower maybe doesn't make sense. So we would get to a form of governance where we hardly know who's who's in the top level they might talk to each other but nobody would care because everything that we care about is right around us wow yeah. so it's that big shift of gravity you know the power and the focus is on what i see every day yeah mm. it's very strong cool so uh that seems to be about our 40 minutes so i would really invite you to um step back with me and we'll debrief a little bit from that sound good yes cool